Once again, looks like we're good now. Uh, I'm here with Roland Frazier. So it's funny, I hit up Roland a couple weeks ago, and I asked him, I said, would you mind coming in and providing insight to the Joint Ops program? And he just said, of course, right? And we were trying to figure out schedules as far as how we were going to do it. And it just so happened that he's here in Denver yep. literally the day after I was going to leave. So I extended a day because who wouldn't want to stay in Colorado a little bit longer, especially during Not June, bad. right? They the said weather. it was hailing here yesterday. Yeah, the weather was bad yesterday, but it's funny. In the morning, we took my kids to the zoo, uh -huh. and it was beautiful. Okay. And then all of a sudden, it just, like, turned. And now today, it's, like, 80. It's <laughs> yeah, crazy. so today we went to the Rocky Mountains and did some hiking and nice. stuff. Yeah, nice. a little uh, belated Father's Day celebration. Sweet. That's cool. So, uh, but Roland here, he's done some amazing things. Omari and I have been following Roland for a long time. Uh, ever since I jumped in the publicity world, started working with Russell Brunson, got wind of Ryan Dice, and then I learned about Roland. So I don't really know how to introduce you because you do all kinds of things, right? Because <laughs> if you even look at your Facebook profile, it's like president, CEO, president, president, and, and principal, and all that. So I, I thought it'd be easier if you just kind of introduce yourself, tell us a little more about what you do. And sure, yeah. I, so I'm, I'm more than anything, I'm like, I guess a strategic investor. I like to find companies that I think have a lot of opportunity and then uh, acquire an interest in them, help them grow and scale and then sell. Right. So um, uh, the perfect example would be with Ryan Dice and Perry Belcher, who I'm, uh, I own uh, a company called Digital Marketer with and uh, an event called Traffic and Inversion Summit and a bunch of other businesses. We um, became partners about uh, officially about five years ago. And um, our goal was to take several of those businesses and grow them and scale them and then sell them. And uh, right now we're in the middle of selling one of them for mid eight figures and uh, it's kind of perfect. And then we've got like five others that will kind of fall in line over the next couple of years too. So it's, it's super fun. So I just like to, I like business. So, and so outside of that, I have interest in a, you know, a real estate SaaS and a direct marketing company and a whole bunch of other things. Right. Um, I like to, it, it, I think a lot of the president CEO stuff is past stuff mm -hmm. uh, and now it's mostly principal. So I think that ultimately you want to move from being on the organizational chart to off it. Mm -hmm. You want to move from the CEO management thing to the boardroom. And that's a transition that, that I've made that, makes my life so much better because I'm not working in any business, but I'm working on a whole bunch of businesses. Right. And see, that's what I love. So here in Join House, what they get to do is we added a little benefit to these guys. So what we do is we invest in companies, but not with capital, mm -hmm. with consulting, with our yeah. knowledge, with Perfect. our team, all that stuff. So we've invested in four of them. Oh, right? great. And we wanted to do something kind of off the wall crazy. So I invested in a dog walking company <laughs> in Austin. Nice. Uh, Omari invested in e-commerce is a physical product that's doing really well uh, in person, but mm -hmm. not online sales uh -huh. and not doing anything. So Sweet. he's going to do that. And so the big reason we reached out is because that's what we're doing. Now, okay. Right. Cause I, I learned if I really want to build an empire, right. It's I got to be more than a CEO of one company. Yeah. I need to start investing, getting equity yep. and benefiting from that. And hopefully, getting them to buy me out because yeah. I did such a good job for them. They buy me out and I go on to the next or, one. Or exit to a, you know, like a private equity company or something right. like that, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I have this vision and you've already done that. So that's a big reason we wanted to reach out and learn from you. Cool. Um, so Roland's done a lot with some companies uh, and, and he's, he's done a lot with Digital Marketer. Y'all hear Omari talk about that all the time. He's at their office like every month. Oh, is it? Yeah, with like a workshop or whatever. CDs, yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, He's learning a lot from there. He actually teaches the Avatar okay. by the way that y'all teach Avatar. Oh, cool. And that was the first lesson. Fun stuff. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, okay. So that was the first lesson we did in here. Sweet. Um, but the biggest thing I wanted to ask you, uh, I've heard a lot. So I, I listened to your podcast with Brad Costanza. Mm -hmm. uh, Brad's an amazing guy. Mm -hmm. I've met him a couple of times. Good person. So we were actually driving to Dallas for our live workshop and we we're listening to the podcast episode. I know you've talked about this many times before, but I want to talk about your million followers in nine months. Sure. I mean, that's insane, right? Because eight months, eight months. <laughs> See, that's even better. But, but I have to say one thing that's funny. Um, so the Brad Costanza episode, we recorded, I don't know, like a year and a half ago or something. <laughs> and, um, and I kept asking him, I was like, I was like, I hadn't heard anything. Cause I, you know, when I do something like this, I'll share it on my pages too. And I said, I said, man, I, you hadn't, did you, did you publish it and just forget to tell me? He's like, no, man. He's, he's like, one of the guys 
that I'm doing a deal with listens to my podcast and I'm doing all the stuff that you talked about on the podcast <laughs> with him. So I don't want him to know <laughs> that I'm doing the stuff that you told me. I to kick out of that. <laughs> See, and, and that's what's amazing. Cause what you said in that interview was like, uh, what you had less than $10,000 that you spent in that eight months. Oh, and uh, no, uh, the total for the million was, it was about two cents alike. Mm -hmm. Um, on the video posts and about two cents alike per fan on the other. So it, it was about 40 grand for that full time. God, man. Yeah. See, that's insane because I'm actually doing it now. Oh, cool. So nice. I'm doing it because uh, I heard you talk about it and then Omari was telling me about Dennis Yu. Mm -hmm. And so we've been watching Dennis Yu as well. Uh, and, and Dennis okay. is going to be providing value here too. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So y'all both did it. And so I started doing it. And what I'm trying to do right now is I'm focusing on Texas, right? Okay. Because it's my home. Mm -hmm. It's a big veteran friendly state. There's mm -hmm. over a hundred thousand veteran entrepreneurs in Texas. So I'm following that process mm -hmm. and I'm spending about, but I'm only spending a dollar a day okay. right? on yeah. mul multiple posts. Yep. And I, it's cost me, I did the math in my mastermind cause I showed the promotions. Uh, one of my, videos was cost me 0 0.003 cents per view. Yep. I mean, I was like, crazy, why right? not do that? Yeah, right? Point, exactly. Not even a full It's basically cent. free. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm doing that now. I'm starting to notice attraction growing, but I also know that, you, so you didn't just do the United States, right? You kind of did the places where you do business. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I targeted the places that I do business and then I want to do business. So right. we, we have, um, uh, a significant presence in the EU and in Australia, and um, we have a pretty significant uh, part of our company in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And then um, one place that I've just been kind of playing around with speaking because the market is so huge and the opportunity is so big as India. Okay. So, so I targeted um, all of those places. And so right now, do you like rough estimate? What is your page at? Like one point? I think it's like one point one two okay. or something like that. Right. Yeah. God. So I'm, I've kind of slowed down on the fan accumulation there because now I'm monetizing all the different opportunities that came out of it. Right. So it evolved from it evolved from how can I create content on a regular basis, and then I started doing that with the iPhone and just like meetings like this. We, yeah. And at the end I'd say, let's record the takeaways and, and I hand you my phone and say, point it at me and I'm like, hey, I'm rolling, I'm here, and we're talking about this, you know, and then posting those up. So that solved my content issue. Right. And then it was a distribution issue. Mm -hmm. So my distribution issue was, I'm gonna put it on my Facebook page, but then my Facebook page doesn't get that many views and I can't, you can't boost or advertise uh, or promote posts on your personal page. Right. So I was like, okay, so I'm gonna go to the, Fan page. Mm -hmm. So I did the fan page and started doing that and grew that. And then it was like, okay, I was getting about 12,500 likes a week before I saw at the, at the upper right corner of your page admin, yeah. there's a thing that says promote page, mm -hmm. which I ignored. <laughs> and then I was like, that's interesting. So I put punched that little button and it said, uh, it was like, you can promote the page too. And I was like, of course you can promote the page too. <laughs> so I started boosting the page at $10 a day. And um, I went from 12,500 likes a week to between 25,000 and 45,000. Well, I know so what I I'm like, doing. <laughs> ah, okay. So that's, just, that's something that um, I was not smart enough to discover for a while. <laughs> and then, um, then it became a monetization thing. So, mm -hmm. okay, I got content, we got distribution. How do I monetize it? And so I started with these little intensives, which is simply a two day workshop with just a few people. Mm -hmm. And, um, I wanted to do it around something that I was super excited and thought would be very transformational for anybody that attended. So I did leverage, grow, uh, scale exit mm -hmm. and basically just gave two days of as like the best stuff that I know on that stuff, two right. days deep dive. And, um, at the end of that offered either membership in our $30,000 mastermind war room or, uh, a, the ability to have to apply to have us on your advisory board for a hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And it was really crazy. The very first meeting, you know, you're, you're like, put that out there and you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> right. We did it right before lunch on the second day and people came back and asked questions. And then four of them joined the hundred or applied for the hundred thousand dollar thing. Um, and, uh, three of them for the $30,000 thing. And then one guy bought a website from us for a hundred grand. And I was like, imagine that from only 
15 people. Right. And the entry point was a thousand, two thousand dollars. Yeah. I, so I like stories. So right. I want to have a story for everything. So I Googled most successful masterminds in history. What yeah. I'm looking for in Googling that was some good story of the mastermind, but also a year that would be about what I wanted to charge, which was $2,000. Mm -hmm. So, so, so there was like Sun Tzu or some crazy one in four hundreds. I was like, no, that's not enough. And then, um, uh, I found Andrew Carnegie started the steel mill masterminds in 18, 1892. Right. And so I was like, that's perfect. 18, I'm going to charge $1,892. Now I can tell Andrew Carnegie story. So it was all $1,892. And until I did it, so I start with, this is the thing we're going to test. Mm -hmm. Then I want to say, how do I expand it really fast? The easiest way to do that is to verticalize. So I was doing it for digital marketers. So I called my buddy Frank uh, Kern mm -hmm. and said, hey, man, I'm doing this intensive thing. What do you think about trying it with your consultants? And he's like, yeah, all right. So Frank's always up upscale. So mm -hmm. he's like, but we were going to sell it for $3,800. It's like, okay, cool. So we sold it for $3,800, sold two of them out, 30 spots, and then made the same offer, same kind of results. And then I called my business partner, Kent Clothier. We own a real estate SaaS called Real Estate Worldwide. And um, I said, what do you think about doing this for real estate investors? And he's like, yeah. So we set it up, same thing. So I'm like, now I've proved it across three different verticals and, um, and it monetizes well and it has a mid-level mid product, the 30K, and a high-level product, the 100K. Uh, Frank's, we sold for 120. <laughs> and um, it's just really, really cool. So see, I, I've, I was so amazed in that because is a, almost a 50% conversion rate on your very first. 36 On your very first event. Yeah. And there's a, almost 2000 not even a full $2,000 entry point. Yeah. And you upsell people into either $30,000 or $100,000. Yeah. Now, was that, if you don't mind me asking, was there payment plans allowed in that, or is it just paid up front? This is it. Yeah, so the, the 30 is paid up front. The 100 I didn't want up front because mm -hmm. I wanted to see if they were doing, like, I went, I'm not in it for the hundred, even though the hundred sounds a lot, like a lot, and I like a hundred, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm in it for the equity in the business. So what we did was we were using it as a way to find businesses that we could work with. So mm -hmm. I don't like to do an equity deal where I'm not getting paid. Right. So um, the way that the hundred worked was you applied, if you were approved, you paid $25,000 a quarter mm -hmm. against um, a percentage of sales. And uh, then at the end of the first year, there was equity that would vest automatically or an option because I didn't want to pay taxes on it. Right. Uh, an option for equity that would vest uh, for us going forward. So you get a free look for a free look at, on an equity basis for a full year of having us as a business partner mm -hmm. and then decide if you want to go forward with it. So it kind of took yeah. the risk out. It was a results in advance kind of thing, but I definitely want them having skin in the game and I wanted them to have enough skin that, 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 they would actually do the things that we were suggesting. Right. right? Yeah. Because I've done equity deals in the past where you take an interest in a business and you're like, okay, we need to do this, this, and this. And like, yeah, we sure do. And then they're <laughs> caught in the whirlwind of their business and nothing ever happens. Right. So that doesn't doesn't work. And that was a huge fear of ours, right? Because we start we our businesses that we're getting into aren't we're big, right? Yeah. They're, they're kind of starters. And so we're doing it more of a, because what you just said, right? You proved it against three verticals, yep. right? What we're doing is that same thing, except in, except of invent, events, because I teach audience building, yep. right? I teach community building. Mm -hmm. I call it private network profits. So nice. it's when you build a group of people who actually follow you, not you as an influencer, but you lead a community that they tie into, yeah. right? The camaraderie, the, the feeling like they're part of something bigger than themselves. That's also better than you as, a, as an influencer. Right. I'm not taking Ryan Dice's call. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's, I teach that and a lot of people think like, especially local service industries, yeah. right? They think, Oh, it can't work for me. But then I, so I was like, if I can prove this at the dog walking company, mm -hmm. that gives me every right to slap anyone in the face who says it can't work for me. Yeah. Because if I can do it with a dog walking with company, anything. you can do it with anything. Absolutely. So guys, I'm going to give smart. you an opportunity here. Do, ask your questions to Roland. I kind of hijacked this interview for a minute. Um, but ask your questions. Let me know what you're thinking about, what questions you have for him. He's here to answer that. So um, while y'all figure out what questions you're asking, I'm going to keep talking because I'm enjoying this. Um, the biggest thing that I've seen is you just said that you're exiting out of a company for eight figures, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's I, Ryan uh, Moran, mm -hmm. right? He's yeah, Ryan's 29. Yeah, and Ryan actually was one of the first people that bought our advisory board thing for 100 grand. And he told me after he bought it, he said, thank you. 
because I never had the confidence to sell anything for a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And now that I have bought for a hundred thousand dollars, I feel like I can do that and right. I see the value I can offer. Which is pretty cool. That's amazing. And, and he's, I think he's 30 now, but he sold that when he was 29, right? The I company? So. Yeah. Just to, and I say that because what we realize is the veteran community is, is behind, mm -hmm. right? They're behind on, like if when we get into these circles, right? The digital marketer, marketer circles, the internet marketer circles, everybody knows everyone, mm -hmm. right? Everybody knows everything. Everybody you know, teaches each other the secrets, all that stuff. The veteran population doesn't even know that this is real, mm -hmm. right? That a 29 year old who I've met, he's in the same city as me. We've hung out a couple of times, just sold his company for eight figures. Mm -hmm at 29. Mm -hmm. There's no reason that these guys can't do it. Yeah. Well, what, what's cool is you guys have the advantage of understanding leadership, discipline, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of things that, um, that the average, I'm going to put stuff online person doesn't have mm -hmm. that I think a, a military background gives you a big advantage right. and you do have a network. And my guess is that, um, uh, well, I mean, I've only because I've seen it because we've trained up so many people at Digital Marketer, but, you know, it's really just a question of a bit of education and a lot of dedication mm -hmm. to make it happen. And I don't think that in this crowd, the dedication is a challenge. Right. So it becomes only the education and that's so easy to get. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's what we, we do all the time, right? That's why we bring people like you mm -hmm. because we are not the type of thing we know everything, Yeah. right? So we'd rather bring people who have done amazing things, bring them in, let them teach things. Yeah. So we've got a couple of action steps. Number one is the Facebook advertising. It, just going back to that when you were promoting your page. Mm -hmm. So you would target based on location. Yep. Was it any kind of like field of interest, study? Yep. Anything 81 like that? different interests that were the interests that I was targeting layered on top of the location, layered on top of the language. Okay. Okay. Yep. So that's a lot of interest. <laughs> well, I mean, if you think about it, so it's easy because I like I didn't, and this is something for everybody that's watching or listening to think about too, is I'm anti friction, mm -hmm. right? So friction is anything that gets in the way of me doing the thing that I'm trying to do. And a lot of us have a tendency to want everything to be perfect before we do it. Mm -hmm. I am the opposite of that. I will absolutely do things in the most idiotic, bumbly, stupid ass way. Right. <laughs> and, um, and I'm okay with that because I'm failing forward. So, the, the way that I went about creating content isn't the best way to create content. The best way would be to record one thing and then edit it out and then put bumpers on the front and back of it and all that. But I know I'm not going to do it right? because I've saw me not do it for a long time. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, how can I eliminate all the friction of editing and, you know, other people and camera crews and all that, which you've done a great job with your setup. <laughs> but, um, but I'm not going to even carry this around. Right. Right. So, um, so I'm, I'm like this, I have pretty much all the time. So friction for me, friction free on content is how do I use this to create the content? Then I'm also, uh, for, from a Facebook standpoint. So now I've recorded the video thing. It's in here. All I have to do is post it to Facebook. That's super easy. Mm -hmm. And then to advertise it, to get distribution of my content, all I have to do is hit boost which is the easy way if you don't know to, to do a Facebook ad, right? Right. It's also stupid because mm -hmm. if I was smart, I'd go into the power editor on my desktop and I do 300, I do a hundred ad sets with three different tests in each one and split tests and see, but I know I'm not going to do that. And I'm also not willing to interface with a third party that I'm going to have to pay five or $6,000 a month to do it for me either. Cause I know that mine's going to actually be close to as good, right? But it's going to happen so much faster. I'm going to have momentum without friction, mm -hmm. which is the ultimate thing. In outer space, if you have momentum without friction, the device that's moving forward will move forward infinitely, mm -hmm. an infinite distance, right? So right. that's what I want to create down here in our little space. So as you're doing whatever you're doing, think about how can I do this in a way that works with my life that isn't going to have all these hurdles that I have to get past because I have to stop and get somebody else to edit or I have to, it's, it's, it's just too many points of disconnect from you getting to what you want to make happen. Right. And so that's why I'd use boost. And so this is a long answer to the interest question, right? I'm come back <laughs> I like it. Yeah. So when I use boost, boost allows you to do some of the things that you could do if you were using that, the complicated desktop power editor, mm -hmm. it's not that complicated, but it's, I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. So, um, so when you go into the boost, you can pick your audience 
And so I just sat there and typed in every type of person, every, uh, every one of my uh, contemporaries, like, you know, like Frank Kern and Ryan Dice and all their groups mm. of people who have liked enough, who've liked those people enough times that I can advertise to them. Mm -hmm. So I just did Ryan Dice, Brendan Burchard, Jeff Walker, Andy Jenkins, et cetera, you know, all guys I know. Right. right. And um, then I was like um, business owner, business CEO, et cetera. And I ended up with 81 of those things, but that took me maybe 45 minutes mm -hmm. of just that one time. Now it's saved as an audience. Right. So I did that and I had, um, I have 14 different audiences depending on what the video is like. So if it's more of a, like I'll do video walkthroughs of rooms, mm -hmm. hotel rooms, what I get upgraded to, I'll do, um, uh, so those are travel things. I'll do uh, interview type things and I'll do business or personal development or whatever. So I have a different audience yeah. for each of those. But it, now that it's saved, it literally is just, a couple clicks. Ooh, ooh, and I'm done, <laughs> right? So that's, that's the importance of that. And you want to not just have a giant number. Like you don't want a million fans of people who don't give a crap, right? right? Who just happened to see it one time and liked it. You want people who actually have expressed actively an interest in a particular kind of thing or who are certainly situated in a specific demographic or psychographic position like I'm the CEO of a company. Right. right. That so that's why the interests are so important. See it's funny because when you say this, so a couple of things that you said that I that I tell my audience all the time. So I was a fifty caliber machine gunner in Iraq. Nice. And what that meant is a 50 caliber machine gun doesn't have sights, right? You don't you don't aim and shoot. What you do is you point walk you. it up, right? <laughs> yeah, you point and then you walk it up. So you kind of move it up and then it hits the target, right? right? I talk about that in business all the time. I, I don't do too much planning, mm -hmm. right? I just jump on, do something. If it fails, I'll admit it and then move past it, right? I do it all the time. And it, it keeps me excited too, it keeps me out of that boredom. I yep. get bored really easy. Yeah. And so when I do that crazy stuff and People always ask me, well, whatever happened to that one thing? No one wanted it, mm -hmm. right? So I just stopped doing it, yeah. but I put it out there. Um, so I love that you said that. And then on top of the whole quality of audience, right? I, I teach my tribe audience all the time, right? And I always talk about quality because everybody's so concerned about how many people, how many people, how many people. Yeah. I think it's important to have a lot of people. Here's the perfect example of that, right? Right. Would you rather do an event with 3,000 people mm -hmm. or 15 people? Because I can tell you that I made more money off of the 15 people event that I did, the little intensive, right. than I've made off of events that had 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 people. <laughs> I mean, think about it, because you get all the marketing costs and all of the, you know, get people into the seats, which is hard, mm -hmm. and then the event cost, right. which for a few thousand people is probably about $350,000. Right now I got to make all of that up before I even get to money. Right. And you can't sell effectively from the stage. I believe maybe Pete will change my mind, <laughs> yeah. but uh, you can't, you can't sell generally a super high ticket thing from the stage. And I also don't like selling from the stage. I like teaching from the stage. Mm -hmm. And then I want people to come to me. I don't want to say, go to the back and buy my expensive stuff. I, that just feels, incongruent with who I am. Yeah. So, um, so I've done events where we had a hundred, 300, a thousand, 2000 people, and we only made a few hundred grand. Mm -hmm. I just did the very <laughs> first event there and made about 400 grand. Right. right? Out of know? 15 people. Yeah. So <laughs> numbers don't matter. Right. Right. Attendance. It's the quality of the audience. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. How dedicated they are. How yes. much they believe in you as well. Right. Yep. Absolutely. So guys, I'm a, I'm about to let him go. If you have any questions, now's the time to ask. So make, don't be shy. He can't see you. So it's all right. <laughs> go ahead and ask some questions. Let me know if you have anything for him. I'm about to let him go so he can get back to his event that he's here in Denver for. Um, I'm a, what's, the, what's the biggest need or challenge that your audience has? You know, the biggest thing that I see, so something that you said that really stuck out to me, and Chad and Alec, this is for y'all. You talked about the perfection right? And about not being perfect. And the most important thing is I think they're doing too much inside their own companies. Mm -hmm. And I think it's trust, mm -hmm. right? They know how to lead, but they know how to lead soldiers. Mm -hmm. And coming out to the civilian world where you're not hiring veterans all the time, mm -hmm. it takes a different type of leadership style. And I think they get intimidated. They fear giving that control mm -hmm. to someone else, mm -hmm. right? And I see it all the time. Now for me, I whiteboard. Mm -hmm. That's my full-time job, mm -hmm. right? I whiteboard. I, I go crazy on it. I send it to my team. 
and they send it to whoever it needs to go to to tell whoever needs to do what what they need to do. Right. Right. Because I believe in staying within your superpower. Yep. I think you say that. I right? do indeed. Yeah. So I, I my superpower is whiteboard and thinking mm -hmm. or, or speaking, mm -hmm. um, not just on stage, just speaking, just coming up with ideas. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that's their biggest struggle. Is, and I'm sure you hear it all the time. Right. Yeah. So so the, the couple things with that is, is you have to be so and especially I would I, I you tell me on the military side. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you are if if you are a general mm. and um and you're really good at seeing the grand strategy not a particular battle or a particular part of a particular battle but right. the grand strategy meaning all of the campaigns that make up the war mm -hmm. that lead you to the ultimate objective that you want to have right right and to me by the way military strategy if you guys aren't reading it is for business like mm -hmm. Read Napoleon, Hamilton, uh, excuse me, uh, Hannibal, uh, Alexander the Great, all of that. Uh, the strategy behind war mm. is so applicable to the strategy of business. And not just like Sun Tzu. I mean, dig into like the campaigns of Napoleon and, the, and right. read uh, Von Rommel's book by Von Rommel and MacArthur's book by MacArthur and General Patton's book by Patton, right? Mm -hmm. The strategy is insane. And, um, and that's your superpower, and that's the highest and best use of your time. And if you're one of those great men, right, or um, uh, or women, although I don't know any military women off the top of my head, I'm sure that there were right. there were those as well. But if you're one of those great people, and you have the strategy part, which I'm sure you're teaching, and then mm -hmm. the whiteboarding part, and then you try to go and do all of the tasks. You can't ever get back to the strategy, and ultimately, you don't have any army to work with. You have to have foot soldiers. You have to have the people who are doing all of the frontline stuff, right? Not because you're afraid to do it. Even if you're good at it, mm -hmm. you have to become the leader. And and in the military, you're having to take. I mean, you're having to take people who don't know how to do the things that you're teaching them how to do to train them and train them up on it, right? right. It's no different in business. You have to train those people up. So to be a good leader is the same in both places. Mm -hmm. And unless you allow them to fail, right, then you will never help them become the better version of themselves. So if you're, if you want to have a good business and you want to have a good team, then it's okay for it not to be perfect. And it's expected that they won't do as well as you right. because they can't possibly. But they have than you because you can't possibly keep up with all the changes in all those different things. So I, I think for me, it's like I realized that it happened uh, when I was practicing law, I'm a recovering attorney. Uh, <laughs> so I had, I had hired associates. When I got to a point where I had enough business, I had to hire somebody else to do some of the work. And then I would meet with the clients and I'd be at the table and I'd see that it just wasn't as good as it could be. Mm -hmm. And then we would fix it with the associate and the client in the room at the same time. So maybe a trend, a transitionary method would be whatever it is that they're doing, do it with them and whoever it's affecting. And I didn't do it. I did it in a coaching way. So basically you get with the client or you get with the person that you're trying to help up and you do it Socratically. You ask them questions that lead them to the, their own conclusions of how to do things the right way, which is how to negotiate too, by the way. Right. When I negotiate, I don't ever say, I want this. Mm -hmm. I ask questions until the person I'm negotiating with says, well, what if we just did that? And that's the thing that I want, right? You do the same thing with employees or contractors that you're trying to bring up. You know their work isn't going to be as good as yours at first, but you don't expect it to be and you let them know that you don't expect it to be, and then it's all okay. And if you're if you're training somebody up, um, think about a, a waiter like in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. How many times you've gone into a restaurant, and sometimes there will be like a, if it's a higher end one, there'll be two people. Mm -hmm. You're like, so I got two of you today. Oh well, I'm training up, you know, Mike right. on this, and she's the expert, and then Mike is the trainee. It's the same thing. So take your people under your wing and think about them as people that you're mentoring. And I think then maybe it's easier because it's not like, well, I don't trust them to do it. It's what whatever they do, 
isn't the final thing. Mm -hmm. Everything is iterative, right? Right. So what they did is version one or point one, and then you're going to help them evolve it into the next version, and ultimately you will end up with someone who you've empowered by allowing them to make decisions and gain experience. Whereas if you're doing all of the stuff, even if you've got that team, you're disempowering them. You're doing them a disservice because you're making all the decisions for them without letting them have any true experience gain. Right. And it's funny because um, I'm sorry to ramble on. Oh, no, 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 passion. no, because that, that's important, right? Because it's, you talk about the general and looking at war and how business is war. Right. So our slogan of Vepnor tribe is business is our new battlefield. Yes. Um, because I believe that everything that the military taught us transitions so perfectly over to the business world. Yeah. As long as we learn how to use them the right way. Yes. Right. It's, yeah. it's important. They learn. generally frown in the civilian world. For you killing people, right? <laughs> Don't do that. Occasionally, right. I think there's, there's that's a frown upon. <laughs> right. yeah. um, but then you also talked about how you know what we've learned in the military community, especially by serving in by serving y'all. We've learned this is there's a saying in the military is "Don't call me sir because I work for a living," mm -hmm. right? Because that's the difference between an officer and yeah. an enlisted. Yeah. I never understood why that was a bragging point. Right. That guy who doesn't work for a living makes more money than I do sitting behind a desk making the decisions on what I'm going to go do. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that's I'd much rather be that guy. Right. Yeah, and that person does a critically important job. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Taking the there's no higher and better use of your time than being able to leverage yourself by having people who will execute the things that you determine are the strategy that needs to be executed. Right. Right. Yeah. Just nothing like that. Well, it's funny because we call it the grunt mindset. Yeah. They're proud, right? They're, they're proud people mm -hmm. because they're proud of the fact that they were on the front line. Sure. And that, of course they are. Yeah. But the problem is they're taking that over into the business world and I think that damages them. Yeah. Right? It's, it's time to stop being that frontline soldier. And it's it's really, time to start being the officer. I, I know in, like, in therapy, um, they, tell, they tell people that a lot of the time challenges in relationships come up. And this is a relationship either between you and your business, you and yourself thinking about your business, or you and your employees, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the challenges are that things that served you, behaviors that served you in the past, right. do not serve you currently, but you don't realize that they're not. And you default to the behavior that served you in the past because that was what protected you or served you best, right? Right. So the things that, that maybe they were thinking about as far as being on the front line and being proud, that's awesome. And now you're, the line has moved. Mm -hmm. And so your mentality has to move with the line. Right. Right. Yep. So guys, you didn't ask any questions. So I got all the questions in here. <laughs> um, Roland, thank you so much. Yeah, man. thank you. I man. really appreciate it. I you appreciate mind if it. I show a little bit of this surrounding? No, no, go ahead. All right, guys. So check this out. Uh, so this is just the corner of where we are. You can walk them through. Um, so we've got, I'm going to unplug my, well, I'm actually going to walk with my mic. <laughs> Kitchen um, there and then all the rest is back there. So check this out, right? This is the view. you got the mountains at Denver, Colorado. Uh, all the mountains out here. This is his freaking living room of his hotel room, all right? Living room of his hotel room. You said there's a kitchen over here? Oh, and there's a, it even comes with a kitchen um, right here. This is his kitchen. This is one room. This is not the hotel lobby. This is a room in the hotel. I want you all to see this because I want you to see the reality of what, what can happen in your life, right? Is this it even comes with like this freaking office space here and all this. I'm not going to go through the whole place, but I mean, this yeah, is huge. Yeah, okay. super cool, I think. Because I play, so I get to, oh, look at that. I get to do that. Uh, <laughs> You're going to host the after party here? <laughs> This is really cool. They this one has a gym built in. Oh, there's even he has his own gym in here. Look at that. It has a gym in there. Cool. And this is the room right there. Bedroom. And this is insane. Places. And what's back there? Just there's more bathroom a, or there's a giant closet here, which is really nice. And then this is really cool. The bathroom the giant has, closet. Has got like it's got a uh, sauna. <laughs> Look at that sauna. And uh and then they're ready to chill, and then the bathtub with this ridiculous view out of the shower and the. He gets to be naked in front of the whole. That's right. Look at that! Look at that view. Just chilling here. I would be in that bathtub with a nice bottle of wine, <laughs> hanging out. He can even have his mistresses here if he wanted to. Uh, no, I'm no, just play. <laughs> He's happily married. Try to get her here. It's a pretty cool place, though. Huh? It's amazing. All right, guys, I'm gonna end it here. Later.
You missed out by not asking questions, by the way. 